now we're going to welcome Tanya Hamilton of the North Oakland Community Coalition. Did I get that right? You did get it right. One Thank of you my for favorite community me. organizations, yes. and uh, I know we have a lot to talk about today. Um, uh, that organization does great things in the community of trying to keep our, our young people safe um, and healthy. So uh, I think the main thing we want to talk about today is the, the new suicide prevention hotline. I heard that's really taken off. I heard that they've been getting a lot of calls. Do you want to talk about that a little bit, start things off? I do, yes. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk about this. We've actually been talking about it all throughout the month of September. September is National Suicide Prevention Month. So this is a really great month to um, bring awareness to a new suicide and crisis lifeline that actually rolled out nationwide in July. And what we have done nationally um, and supported through SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse and Mental Health um, Services Administration, they've rolled out a 988 number that we can all remember okay. as easily as we yeah, remember nice and easy 911 yeah 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 so i know we've all seen the longer uh telephone numbers that are shared for suicide prevention hotlines mm -hmm. This 988 number is going to allow us to make sure everyone can say that number in their head just yes. as easily as 911 and uh, make help available faster for everyone what, when, in, in what situation would you would you encourage someone of any age to pick up that phone and dial that number? Whenever they are feeling like they are in crisis or even very importantly, when someone they know is in crisis, mm -hmm. meaning that there is no time to wait until tomorrow and call your doctor or your counselor or your uh, recovery coach. Um, so this lifeline will help in both instances of maybe suicidal ideation as well as any kind of substance issue. Okay. So that's that's what's different between 988 and 911. And then what that national number does is immediately direct you to local resources where help can be received immediately. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Does does someone arrive at the home? What what happens when they call that number? Like it doesn't yeah. act like EMS, right? Like you don't pick it up, dial the number and someone knocks on your door. That's a really good point, Joe, because I oftentimes I think people are hesitant to call crisis lines because they think that the police are going to show up at their door. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. In fact, studies show that oftentimes when someone is in crisis, what they really need is someone to talk to in that moment and just help them with some coping strategies to, you know, take, to, to just deflate the situation in, in time for them to be able to maybe t the next day reach out to their doctor for help. Um, sometimes that's not the case and sometimes someone is in immediate danger and needs immediate help. Um, but the person who answers that lifeline is going to assess the situation and figure out what the next steps are. Wow, okay. boy. That's yeah. uh, admirable to, to be on the other end of, of getting that call Isn't and, and it? talking yes. them off the ledge, so to speak. So. Yeah, and there is so much training that goes involved it, into working at a crisis line like mm. this. They're very well-trained um, staff. Mm, that's awesome. Mm, that's uh, we showed a graphic a moment ago. Uh, there's a website, 988lifeline.org. Um, what, do what does that website explain, just kind of what we talked about? Exactly what we yeah. talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Um, all right, uh, so what else uh, is going on with the NOCC nowadays? Well, as you know, uh, our two focuses are mental wellness initiatives in the community and um, substance misuse prevention, mm -hmm. specifically with our youth. We wanna make sure underage use does not happen. Um, so along with this month rolling out 988 and talking about suicide prevention, we have also started implementing mental health first aid trainings. So we have two staff members who are certified facilitators of that program and can offer this training throughout the community. It's a full day training, so it is a time commitment, but it is a great way to spread awareness in our community of how to help people you know who are experiencing behavioral changes, to understand what they're going through, and to help them seek help. So we're encouraging as much of the community as possible to take advantage of these free trainings. We've actually received an Oakland County grant to offer these trainings for free to our community through next April. Wow. So we're happy to be able to offer them free of charge until then. Um, we're also getting ready to roll out what is called QPR training. And the QPR stands for Question, 
persuade, and resources. And that's a smaller, a shorter training. It lasts about an hour. And it's a suicide prevention training specifically, just to really be the, you know, be able to help talk someone through a crisis situation and connect them to resources. Okay. Both of those trainings are not meant to make us um, service providers. Sure. They are to give us the the knowledge we need to just really talk someone through what they're experiencing in the moment and help them seek the care that will best benefit them. So I think the more we can roll these trainings out in the community, um, the stronger that we'll be and the more able we are to help our neighbors. Yes, the more understanding and giving community members tools, like you said, just to be that maybe that first line because it might yeah. be that we have the interaction with somebody who's going through something and if they're afraid to make a call or to reach out, we can at least have some of those initial conversations yeah. and help direct them. That's great. And how many of us know CPR or know basic first aid? We've been right. trained in that so that we can be that first set of hands that are able to help. This yeah. is the same thing. And with the prevalence of mental health challenges that exist today, yeah. it's really important that we're all able Yes. to provide this. I've read, I've read articles about how anxiety and depression, how they're on the rise. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, especially and, you know, with what we went through the past two years. Well, well that, but yeah. it also yeah. is attributed to our devices and mm. a lot of teens and younger, they're always in front of them and, you know, being subject to, you know, the peer pressures and societal, you know, what people think they should be looking like and acting like and yeah. that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure it used to be you went to school and if things were a little tough you went home and ah oh, you're around your family now it's just <laughs> it's constantly there so yeah. and, and there's a lot of pressure for parents too yeah. to keep up with all of this yep. and know how to best support their children right yeah. speaking yeah. of which i've been reading these headlines over the past week or two with TikTok and, and social media there's these weird challenges that young people are, are giving into, which blows my mind. And the most recent one was cooking chicken chicken in like cough medicine or something. Mm -hmm. And of course there was the Tide Pod challenge. Yeah. And these young people, they see these challenges on social media and they try to do them and, and they're getting hospitalized. Yes. I would imagine that's, a, that's a, a new thing that the NOCC has to deal with and educate parents about. It is. There are so many different trends happening now. And just going back a second and talking about social media on its own, um, that is a huge area, I think, of education uh, for parents that we need to focus on because many parents aren't aware that these challenges or these trends are existing. So that's something that we're hoping to do this fall is offer some um, presentations for parents to, you know, learn what's happening now and then continue to offer these updates on trends with them by establishing a group we're calling In The Loop, which stands for Lake Orion and Oxford Parents. Okay. And it's a group that they can, they, can, uh, they can engage in any way they feel comfortable. They can just follow us on social, they can come to presentations, um, they can join our newsletter, but we will be able to keep them updated on trends like cooking chicken in cough syrup. <laughs> cooking chicken in cough, I have not heard that one. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going around. Why? <laughs> yeah. I don't know I, how these things it, originate. Right. I, I don't Who get it. comes up with them? And yeah. yeah. Now, I attended, uh, years ago, I attended an NOCC presentation at the library where you had a uh, teenager's bedroom kind of set up on the stage in the meeting room there. And, and it, there were all kinds of items that were scattered throughout the, the bedroom. And the, the point of the presentation was to educate parents on what they should look for in their teenager's room. Um, you know, a parent has a right to go into their child's room until they're 18 and get out. <laughs> um, they have a right to go in there and see what's in there. And imagine you see like Tide Pods or a cough medicine or something. And a parent who's not in the loop Right. might not see those things as a red flag. So right. your organization is like, here's what th some things you should look for. Like like take uh, the, the air, you know, the compressed air cans that you dust your keyboards with. If you find one of those in your child's bedroom, they may be misusing it, right? They could be. There are, and you can purchase them on Amazon. You, there are Pepsi cans, Coke cans that the tops screw off of and 
things can be hidden inside. Mm -hmm. And I would even go a step further, Joe, and say not only is it a parent's right to go in their child's bedroom, it's their responsibility to yeah. go in their child's bedroom. Um, we are the best um, advocate for our own child, mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility to keep in, in to keep on top of who they're spending their time with, what they're um, consuming. Those are all right. basic parent responsibilities. Yeah, a lot of parents want to be their their teenager's friend and buddy, and mm -hmm. uh, you have to be a parent first, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So lots of things to look for, and a lot of responsibilities on a parent to to keep them safe, but uh, there's always gonna be new challenges. That's so, right. So, yeah. Yep. Was there anything else that you wanted to, to talk about? Um, well, we do have some uh, resources that we've begun offering at the coalition in, the, in our office. Um, one of them is marijuana lock boxes. Oh, yeah. So we all know marijuana mm -hmm. is now legal in Michigan, right? In we have a brand new dispensary right here in Lake yeah. Orion, and we it do. was bustling. <laughs> it is popular. <laughs> It is popular, <laughs> and so now, you know, as far as the laws go in Michigan, it is treated very much like alcohol. So our message from the coalition is that just like alcohol for adult use, we're looking for safe, responsible, and legal mm -hmm. use of those substances. Um, but we all know that as, as is for alcohol, same for THC, underage use is not safe for the developing right. brain. So marijuana prevention in our youth is still very, very important. And we know that if parents are going to keep marijuana in the home um, with children present, that locking it up is very important, especially since we now have so many forms of it that could look attractive to even younger children in mm -hmm. edibles and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that, that, that surprised me when I, I covered the grand opening of, of the dispensary here in Lake Orion, and that's probably the thing that surprised me the most was uh, oatmeal cookie pie things and yeah. gummies yeah. and all that stuff yeah, it looks just like, like desserts and yeah candy it's like yeah and, it's yeah. like a candy store and imagine a parent buying that stuff and leaving it laying around the home if mm -hmm. you have young yeah. people they see gummies or cookies right. or whatever yeah so lock boxes are available at the coalition free of charge we've actually offered a couple of drive through distribution dates recently and we had a great turnout where people could just drive through the parking lot. We held one at Orion Township uh, and then we held another one in the parking lot of the Lake Orion Police Department um, and it was no questions asked. Just drive through, get your box mm -hmm. and move on. Yeah. Um, and so that was great. We plan to offer more of those uh, this fall. Um, but if any, at any time someone wants to come and pick one up for it from us or have it delivered, we're happy to do that as well. Okay. Great. We'd love to help you get the word out on that. Thank that's, you. That's fantastic. I did want to ask again, the classes that you're offering to the community, yes. um, when are those being offered and how does somebody get signed up? So the next mental health first aid training is taking place on the 12th of October. Okay. The location, King of Kings Lutheran Church, is offering their space to us, which we're very thankful for. Um, so that will be the next one. We do have um, a church, um, Christ the Redeemer is actually offering a training to their parishioners that next Saturday, the 15th of October. But we are encouraging any business organization who would like to offer this training to their staff or to the people they provide yeah. service to, please call us. We can set that up and make it happen for that you. That would be great. Wow, mm -hmm. that you can even offer it to a business or organization. Yes. I mean, just think what we could do if we have awareness and some basic tools spread throughout our communities and businesses. Absolutely, yeah. and, and again, the beautiful thing is that until the end of April of 23, it is free to our community uh, thanks to this grant. It is, the mental health first aid training has a price attached to it. It's a national organization, a national curriculum, and so there is, it, it can be quite costly to train a staff, but until April, we're able to provide it for free. So wow. I'm hoping many take advantage of it. Yes, absolutely. I hope so as well. And yeah, I'm I sure this is all on your website. It is all on our website. N-O-C-C-M-I.org. Correct. Uh, I'm sure everything we talked about here today is on there somewhere. So uh, thanks for everything that you and your organization are doing uh, in this community. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yes, thank and you so much. Thanks for coming and joining us yes. today. Thank you.